Good evening, everyone. We are so happy to be here to tell you about Japan's legendary classic, The Tale of Genji. My name is Yui, and these are my co presenters. I will explain what The Tale of Genji is. My name is Hitomi. I would like to discuss culture of the Heian period. My name is Haruna. I will tell you about the author of The Tale of Genji. Through this presentation, you can learn Japanese most cla famous classic, interesting Heian culture, and popularity of the author. We hope you grow in appreciation of the Japanese classic literature, The Tale of Genji. Let me begin. <coughs> Have you ever heard the Tale of Genji? It is Japan's most famous classic and the love story. It has been read by many people for 1,000 years. The Tale of Genji was written by Murasaki Shikibu in the early 11th century. It is called Heian period in Japan. During the Heian period, Japanese culture developed a lot, especially literatures, the writing systems, poems, and architectures. The Tale of Genji was the most famous novel at that time. Today, I will tell you about basic information, <coughs> the plot, and reasons why the Tale of Genji has been read for 1,000 years. Let's look at basic information. There are many characters, chapters, and settings in the Tale of Genji. Let me tell you about characters. Hikaru Genji is the main character who was an imperial prince with good looks and talent. After his mother died, he remembered her, and he fell in love with about 15 women. <laughs> At that time, the emperor and nobles had mistresses, but Hikaru Genji had many. <laughs> this story is written about his love stories. Let's move on to chapters. There are 54 chapters in the Tale of Genji. They are divided into three parts. Part one is about Hikaru Genji's early life. Part two is about his later life. And part three is about his descendants. Of course, these chapters describe their love stories and their relationships with many women. Let me tell you about setting. The Tale of Genji is, a set, is set in Kyoto. Hikaru Genji lived in a palatial residence called Rokujo Inn. It is imaginary. The third part, Uji, which is in Kyoto, is the main setting. There is a bridge in Uji, which appears in this novel. There are many places which have connections with the Tale of Genji. This is basic information about the Tale of Genji. Now, you know about the background of the Tale of Genji. As I said, Hikaru Genji fell in love with many women. There is an intriguing story in, in the first part. It is a tale of romance and jealousy. I'd like to tell you about the story from the beginning. Hikaru Genji was the second son of Emperor Kiritsubo and Empress Kiritsubo. When he was three years old, his mother, Empress Kiritsubo, died. He really loved his mother, so he was attracted by women who were like his mother. When he was 12 years old, he married Aoi, who was four years older than him, but she was very proud, so he couldn't have a good relationship at first. And Hikaru Genji fell in love with a woman named Rokujo. She was also older than him, but she loved Hikaru Genji deeply. And Hikaru Genji fell in love with another woman named Yugao. She was younger than him, and she was very pretty. So Hikaru Genji really loved her. So he, he, Hikaru Genji didn't see Rokujo so much. 
Then, Rokujo felt jealous of Yugao. One day, Rokujo appeared as a vengeful spirit and killed Yugao by a curse. In another chapter, Aoi finally gave birth and Hikaru Genji and Aoi's relationship became good. And Rokujo felt, felt jealous of Aoi too. After Aoi gave birth, she was killed by Rokujo's vengeful spirit. <laughs> then, Rokujo realized she was a vengeful spirit. So she moved, she moved far from him. Then, Hikaru Genji found a woman who was like his mother. Her name was Fujitsubo, but she was his father's new wife. <laughs> but Hikaru Genji approached her and finally, she became pregnant. This is one of the famous stories of the tale of Genji. He, had many, he, had, he fell in love with many women, and he had amazing but awful relationship with many women. It is like a soap opera. <laughs> this situation has left people all over the world in the past and present. That's why many people like the tale of Genji. Now, let me tell you about why the tale of Genji has been read for 1,000 years. 1,000 years is a long time to survive. Why didn't the tale of Genji disappear? And why do today Japanese people know this novel? First of all, Japanese people Learned the tale of Genji in junior high school and in junior high school and high school. They studied Japanese classic to learn old grammar and vocabularies. And the tale of Genji is also part of our entrance exam for entering university. Japanese people have to study the tale of Genji. Moreover. There are many entertainment about the tale of Genji. They describe the story clearly, easily, and beautifully. Most of them show how popular the tale of Genji is. It is rare for a story to be read for 1,000 years. The tale of Genji is popular and has been read and known by people still now because of education and entertainment. The tale of Genji will have enduring popularity in Japan. This is the tale of Genji. It is Japan's most. It is symbol of the Heian period. The story is intriguing, and these are the reason why the tale of Genji has been read for one thousand years. The Tale of Genji is the oldest and longest classic in Japan, and it is quite famous because all Japanese know this novel. I hope it will not disappear but keep being read by many people. Thank you for listening. <laughs> now, you know about the background of the Tale of Genji. Then, Hitomi will discuss the culture of the Thank you, Yui. As Yui said, I would like to discuss culture of the Heian period. The tale of Genji closely related culture of the Heian period between 8th century and 12th century. So, I would like to tell you about three things. Writing style, picture scroll painting, and life of novels. First, I would like to talk about writing style of the tale of Genji during the Heian period between 8th century and 12th century. As you introduced before, there are different writing styles in Japan. They are kanji, hiragana, and katakana. Murasaki Shikibu, who was the author of the Tale of Genji, used hiragana and wrote the Tale of Genji. People who lived before 8th century used manyogana in Japan. The character in Chinese text called kanji was introduced into Japan from China the beginning of the 4th century. However, 
Japanese people just use lip to represent similar sounding Japanese syllable, so they ignore the meaning of the characters. At that time, the, this writing style was called manyogana. At first, manyogana was written in the block style. Each scroll is written carefully. After that, it simplified and developed another style. It is the cursive style. Manyogana was widely used until 8th century. However, manyogana declined because hiragana was created from the classic style. Also, it was called ladies' hands because it started by women. The Teu Genji is one of the most famous works using hiragana. Next, I want to talk about picture scroll. Have you ever seen picture scroll? It is classic traditional it is classic traditional painting with a story. It is called emakimono in Japanese. Most of emakimono based, most emakimono based on romantic literature works from 8th century and 14th century. Yamakimono used unique drawing technique called fukinuke yatai. When artists drew the indoor scene, they didn't draw roof or ceiling of a building to, in order to make people indoor be visible. The most, most famous picture scroll is Genji Monogatari Emaki. It is based on the story of the Tebu Genji. Uh, orig what, the original scroll was 450 feet long. The, the most important factor of, the Genji, of Genji Monogatari Emaki is the use of rubbish thick color to improve the mood of each scene. The Genji Monogatari Emaki is known as the highest quality work, and if you see Genji Monogatari Emaki, it is helpful to understand the story of Teibu Genji. Finally, I want to talk about Life of Nobles. The Teibu Genji was written about Life of Nobles. Their life was very elegant and luxurious. First, noble lived in, uh, lived in a building called Shindenzukuri. Inside the building, each room was very big, so they used kicho, it's a divider, to divide like screen made of silk to separate the room. Also, it, it was used as ornament. Moreover, during Heian period, noble women couldn't show their face to men, even to father or brothers, so they hung on Miss its bamboo screen in front of their room. Noble women use both Kicho and Miss as double wall. Next, noble women wore the interesting clothes called Juni Hitoe. They began to wear Juni Hitoe from, from the 10th century. Juni Hitoe was very gorgeous, but dressing was very difficult. First, they wore underwear called Tani. Next, Uchigi was put on over Tani. They combined colors and wore many pieces Uchigi. In addition, they, they changed color tone each season. There were many color combinations and the rules were strict which season or occasion they should wear Juni Hitoe. This is an example of color combination of each season. If they used color combination that ignores the rule, it was considered to be rude. After they wear Uchigi, they layered Uchiginu, Uagi, 
Mo and Karaginu. Junihitoe was made up of many kinds of clothes like this. Today's kimono based on Junihitoe. In conclusion, the Taibu Genji is increase some interesting culture, writing style, picture scrolls, and life of novels. So that's why when we read Taibu Genji, we can also run life culture of Heian period. Thank you for listening. Now, now Haruna will talk about the author of Taibu Genji. Thank you, Hitomi. As Hitomi said, I will tell you about the author of the tale of Genji. First of all, how many of you know the British author William Shakespeare? Does anybody know when he wrote? Yes, he wrote his works around the year 1600. Today, I will introduce Murasaki Shikibu who was the writer of the tale of Genji. She was active around uh, about 600 years before William Shakespeare. And I will tell you about three points. First, who Murasaki Shikibu is. Second, the scholastic abilities that she had. And finally, what made her such a great writer. Let me move on to my first topic. Many Japanese people know about Murasaki Shikibu as the writer of the tale of Genji. However, there are many mysteries surrounding her. First, her real name is not known by many people. The name we call Murasaki Shikibu is a just pen name. One part of her name, Murasaki, came from Murasaki no Ue, one of the characters of the tale of Genji. The other part of her name, Shikibu, came from her father's working position called Shikibu Sho. And her, uh, the exact year of her birth is not known by many people. There are several theories about the year when she was born. She was born, uh, the strongest theories are she was born in 970 or 973. Similarly, the year of her death is not known by many people. And also, what year the tale of Genji was written is not clear. The strongest theories were she, uh, the strongest theory is she wrote this novel after her husband died. However, there are two other theories. One of them is she wrote this novel during her married life. The other one is she wrote this novel while she served the emperor. These, these, uh, these mysteries are difficult to prove, but many Japanese people are caught up in them. Next, I will share with you the scholastic ability that Murasaki Shikibu had. Murasaki Shikibu was an intimate writer so that she could write a story which has been read over 1,000 years. She, she had many scholastic abilities. The particular abilities are reading and writing. Murasaki Shikibu could understand not only hiragana but also kanji. To understand both Hiragana and kanji is nothing special for Japanese people today. However, in the Heian period, only people of noble ranking, a small percentage of population could read and write. Usually, men used the kanji, but women always used the hiragana instead of kanji. Murasaki Shikibu's family were not so wealthy but they were descendants of cultured people. Murasaki Shikibu learned hiragana just like many other women learned. In addition, 
Murasaki Shikibu was always listening while her father was teaching her brother kanji. So Murasaki Shikibu could understand both hiragana and kanji. Finally, I will tell you about what made her such a great writer. When Japanese people talk about Murasaki Shikibu, we can't tell about her without mentioning her rival, Seisho Nagon. If Seisho Nagon had not lived in that period, Murasaki Shikibu would not have been famous among Japanese people today. Seisho Nagon was a very important person for Murasaki Shikibu. First, Murasaki Shikibu and Seisho Nagon had some similarities. For example, Seisho Nagon had many mysteries, just like Murasaki Shikibu had. The exact year of Seisho Nagon's birth and death and her real name are not known. And also, the, uh, next, the circumstances of Seisho Nagon were similar to, similar to those of Murasaki Shikibu. Seisho Nagon's father and grandfather were great poets, so she, uh, Seisho Nagon inherited her writing abilities from her ancestors. The number one reason that Murasaki Shikibu and Seisho Nagon were matches is known by many Japanese people. Murasaki, Seisho Nagon was the tutor of Emperor's daughter. Afterwards, the emperor's, emperor's rival asked Murasaki Shikibu to be a tutor of his daughter. Both Murasaki Shikibu and Seisho Nagon wanted their student to be an empress, so they became rivals. In Murasaki Shikibu's diary, she slandered Seisho Nagon, saying that Seisho Nagon's works were just scribbled. Murasaki Shikibu was a very smart person, but she was also a jealous person. Both Murasaki Shikibu and Seisho Nagon wrote very important Japanese classics. As I said before, Murasaki Shikibu wrote The Tale of Genji, uh, one of the famous pieces of Japanese literature. The most well-known work of Seisho Nagon is the pillow book called Makura no Soshi in Japanese. Both the tale of Genji and the pillow book were written in hiragana. Murasaki Shikibu and Seisho Nagon were pioneers of using hiragana. In conclusion, many Japanese people know Murasaki Shikibu because she had lots of intriguing mysteries. She had exceptional scholastic ability and she helped to uh, she helped to use uh, she helped to spread using hiragana with her rival we will never have the day when we forget about murasaki shikibu thank you for listening Through our presentation, you had learned that the Tale of Genji is an important Japanese classic around life during the time of the Tale of Genji and the author Murasaki Shikibu. In conclusion, the Tale of Genji is a famous classic and a symbol of the Heian period. It reveals Heian culture to us today and it was written by popular author Murasaki Shikibu. We hope the tale of Genji will continue to be read by future generations. Thank you for listening. Does anyone have any questions? Yes? The question is, have I read 
Does it have Genji in English? <laughs> no. <laughs> but Haruna has a book in English. So I will try, I, I will read the tale of Genji in English before I, I go back to Japan. <laughs> Does anyone have any? Akita. Yes? Um, you said they teach it in junior high school. Mm -hmm. Does anybody think it's too mature for junior high school students <laughs> to read about some guy? And... <laughs> 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 the question is, uh, the tale of Genji. Uh, is it too mature? Is, is, <laughs> is the tale of Genji too much for too mature for junior high school student. <laughs> In my opinion, I think it's, it is too mature for junior high school student, but Japanese, Japanese pick up some chapters. It's not it only beautiful thing. Um, they mainly study grammar and vocabulary. So, yes. <laughs> Does anyone have any question? Yes, please. Um, is the Heian period considered the, the, the prosperous period of Japan? Or um, is there another period that is considered like the golden days or the, the oh. days to look back on and, and really prize? He wants to know if the Heian period is go gorgeous, pe gorgeous period. I think yes, because as Yui explained, in the Heian period, lots of um, lots of things were developed. So I think Heian period is gorgeous period. Any more questions? Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs>